Praise the Lord and good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for joining us here at Evening Light this morning. Today we're live here in Studio A uh, having services. It's 28 degrees in Upper Marlboro and that's just a little too cold to be in the tent of meeting. But we can be here and still worship the Lord still feel his presence, still feast upon him and glorify his name. And again, I say praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord to those of you that are here in the DMV and evening light. Good morning and God bless you. I'm so glad that you've tuned in. And those across the country to our, our members in North Carolina, Virginia, wherever you are uh, that you're tuning in and around the world, of course, we thank God that you've taken this time to join us in worship. Our Sunday morning service, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., our service starts. And today, second Sunday, is our Women of God Sunday. And Lady Doretha Pettis is going to be our, our speaker today. And she's going to share with us from the Word of God. Normally, Tuesdays and Thursdays are our Level Up Bible study. But uh, for the month of January, we prepare for our, our course for the year. And so we're in preparation, getting our course ready for, for beginning February. Our Zoom course will begin February the 7th. And our 8 a.m. Level Up class on Thursday will begin on February 9th. And if I can, <coughs> we've got our textbook. Our textbook is going to be entitled Life Overflowing by T.D. Jakes. Life Overflowing by T.D. Jakes. Go ahead, get your textbook now so that you'll be ready from the beginning of February when we start to actually have our classes. God bless you. Uh, I also want to, to remind you, and, and I want to I wanna give a, a, a shout out to those. I want to thank God for those of us that joined us on Friday night over at Word of Faith for the evangelistic service. My God, what a time we had. The Lord used uh, Pastor Wilkins in a mighty way as she brought forth the Word of God and then ministered to us. And yokes were broken. People were delivered. A word was spoken, I tell you, and we just thank God that the Lord, that young lady was used under the power of the anointing. And if you missed it, you really missed it. But I'm sure it's on Facebook or YouTube somewhere. Go back, take the time, and let that anointing flow into you from that service. There are those on our prayer list that we're asking special prayer for. Each week we ask for prayer for the unsaved and the unchurched, those that don't know the Lord in the pardon of their sins, and some who have walked away from God. We ask that you call their names out and that you ask the Lord to save them and for the Lord to bring them home. We also ask special prayer for our school children, for our truckers, those that are on the road, uh, 18 wheeler or larger, whatever the sizes are, that you call their names out, mention them in prayer. And then of course, for the war going on over in Ukraine and Russia, that, that whatever the Lord's will is, it will be done. And then we, the church, will say amen to God's will. Specifically, I ask special prayer for Sandra Sturdivant as she prepares to have surgery on next week, I believe. Um, the Jordan family, Apostle John Allen, as he goes in for a procedure on Monday. Uh, Loretta Jones, Theo at Austin and family, uh, Glenda Boston and family, Barbara Shell and family, Evangelist Patricia Blano. Let's continue to lift her up. Let's keep her name hot plate. Let's put it on, on that front burner that the Lord would miraculously manifest the healing. Also, Mother Crystal Hinman, we were so glad to see that she was up. She had on her Eagles t shirt. Smile on her face. Thank God. The Lord has, has continued to bless her. Uh, Keith Mitchell, Parson Branch, 
Barry Williams and Brother Bob Williams continue. Let's let's be in prayer for, for that list and, of course, pray for evening light, uh, that the work of the Lord will continue, that we will continue to have favor with Prince George's County, that we'll continue to have favor with the contractors, the engineers, so that so that the Lord will be glorified. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Do you have your copy? Do you have your copy of the parable of the cockroach? This is the first book the Lord has allowed me to author. And you need to get a copy of this. Uh, it, it helps us in parable form to identify how sin can creep in, how sin can hide. Yeah, just like just like cockroaches, most of us are aware. Get a copy of it. Uh, it's on Amazon. It's on Kindle. Or if you email here at the house or myself, we'll be glad to get in touch with you and uh, send you a copy. The cost of the book is $15. It's $15 plus postage and handling. God bless you. And uh, contact information is the evening light dot light the evening light dot light at aol.com let me repeat that again it's the evening light dot light aol.com our phone number here is 301-390-7099 that's 7099 and if you'd like to make an online donation you can through L, uh, through Cash App at do dollar sign Lcom12. That's dollar sign Lcom12. Givelify and PayPal. Givelify.com and PayPal is the Evening Light Church of Christ. God bless you so much. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for joining us. We thank you for joining us. We're finding more and more of our brothers and sisters in Christ are coming on the internet, and so. You know, there, there's so many others that you could have turned to and turned, whatever you do on the Internet now. Uh, but we thank God that you decided this morning that you're going to hear the word of God coming from First Lady Pettis. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for this another day. I, I thank you that you allowed us to see this day. No matter what's going on in our lives, you know all about it. No, no matter what obstacles we're coming up against, no matter what challenges we're faced with, Lord, you have made a way of victory and a way of escape. And so this morning, God, we come to you thanking you, thanking you for all that you've done. Thanking you, Lord. Thanking you, Lord. Thanking you, Lord for the health, the strength, thanking you, Lord, that on last night, no matter what happened last night, when we woke up this morning, Father, we had no doubt that we were saved. Hey, the enemy wasn't able to snatch that from us, God. We shut the door so that he couldn't get in our mind, God. Couldn't get in our mind and try to plant seeds of doubt. Oh, God, and I thank you. Thank you for your healing virtue this morning. Yes, Lord. Let it go forth. Let it go forth, Lord. Those on our list are sick and shedding, Lord. Touch this morning in the mighty name of Jesus to heal, to deliver, to set free, to restore or to a wealthy place in you, God. Do it today. I pray for my brothers and sisters that are standing behind podiums. Some are back in sanctuaries and others are virtual. But Lord, I pray that your word goes forth you said it will not return unto you void, and I thank you for that. Do this for us, and we will give your name all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen, and thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our scripture reading this morning is going to come from Ephesians chapter 4, and I will be reading verses 1 through 6. That's Ephesians 4, 
verses 1 through 6. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all in you all. God's word for God's people. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you, First Lady. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you see, we're growing. We're growing trees here now in the house. So <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a little, a little, little difficult getting around. It's offering time. Before before uh, Lady Pettis comes, let's go ahead and raise our offering. Those of you that are giving of your tithe, your 10% that we're giving back to God, the 10% that we're giving back to God, and it's in the scriptures beginning in Genesis. It goes from Genesis <coughs> all the way through scripture. Those that have their tithe, uh, Malachi, he preached it to the priest and he asked them, will a man rob God? The priests had robbed God in their tithes and offering. And he compelled them, come on, bring it all, bring it all back to the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And that prophetic word that he said, that Malachi said to the priest, still applies to us today. Bring God his 10% and just watch and see. Just watch and see God open that window for you. Those of you that have your offering, God bless you. Again, you can online. Cash app, dollar sign, E-L-C-O-M 12, dollar sign, E-L-C-O-M, L-C-O-M 12, givelify.com or PayPal, Evening Light, Church of Christ. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for every gift. We thank you for every giver. We thank you this morning for the widow's might. Hey, God. No, everyone, everyone doesn't have hundreds or thousands to give. For some, it's the $1, the $5, the $10. And some may have even less than that. But Lord, I thank you and I ask you, God, to make a way for them to be able to pour into your house for the uplifting and the upbuilding of the kingdom. Oh, my God, do this for us. In 2023, God, do this for us. We'll give your name all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God and amen. Thank you. Thank you for your offering. Thank you for your offering. At this time, it's it's my privilege. She doesn't come often, but it's my privilege this morning that uh, Lady Pettis is going to come and share with us out of the word of God. Come on, get your Bibles, get your computers, laptops, whatever ready to enjoy the word of God with her. Come on, let's thank God for Lady Pettis. Amen and amen. Amen. As before I minister the word, I'm going to play a song called or titled Called to Be. We let this song minister to us.
you call me to be do we say passionately mm. yes lord yes the title as you may have already guessed if not of my message or teaching today is called to be lord god in the name of jesus i praise you and i thank you for the opportunity to stand before your body of Christ, your people, God. And I ask that the words of my mouth mm -hmm. and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord. That's the main thing, acceptable in your sight. And Father, I pray that the message that I'm about to give is received, that the eyes of our understanding are open, Lord that people understand the message that I'm trying to get across through you. I thank you for the opportunity to share. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. amen, amen. Our scriptures will be coming from Ephesians chapter 3, 1 Corinthians 12, and John 15. Don't get nervous. I'm not reading all of that. But I just, in case I don't get to it all, you'll know the scriptures. Again, Ephesians 3, 1 Corinthians 12, and John 15. I'd like to give some background um, information. Paul was in prison. And while he wrote while he wrote the letters in the book of Ephesians and other books as well, the Ephesians letter was delivered to Chiaus, and he was to inform the churches about Paul's situation. So I want to ask, who's the church? Where's the church? Is it the tent of meeting? Is it the building? But that message was sent to the churches, not just the structure, but to the churches. And we say often that the church is us or that the church is in us. The letters address God's original kingdom intention about maintaining and to bring them together in Christ as one people. With Christ as the head, the church was endowed with power of the Holy Ghost. To do what? To serve together in unity. Mm -hmm. To live lives of faith. And to live mature lives. To live what? To live mature lives for the full fulfillment of God's program. In Ephesians 1, Paul prayed that the eyes of the people's heart be enlightened so that they would know the hope of their calling. In essence, Paul was telling the church that you have an inheritance. You are spiritually wealthy, spiritually wealthy. With that spiritual inheritance, the church was given what they needed to fulfill God's purpose for their lives. 
the more the church fulfills Christ's kingdom missions, the more the church will share the teachings of Christ. And the emphasis there is share the teachings of Jesus Christ. The more we, the church, are enlightened with the word of God through sermons, Bible studies, books that we read, etc., the more we know the hope of our calling. In Ephesians 3, starting at verse 1, Paul reminds us that he is in prison and that he is writing so that the Ephesians would understand his knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Go with me to verse Ephesians 3, verses 5 through 8. And it reads, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his apostle, holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me, excuse me, by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least, of all saints. Let me part again. Unto me, whom am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Excuse me. Thank you. Verse 8. Some might, I don't want to use the term, but for lack of a better word, cringe at the word preach because some of us don't want to say, want to say, I'm not a preacher. Well, it doesn't matter what your title is or if you even have a title. So instead of saying preach, maybe replace it with the word or substitute it with the word proclaim. Now, all of us, regardless of who we are, can proclaim among the Gentiles or the unsaved, the unsearchable riches of Christ. What is man to see? Let's look at verse nine. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Verse 9 is telling us to enlighten everyone of God's plan. When there's an opportunity, share God's word. Our life should be a witness and a way of sharing God's word and what it means to us. Through the church, the wisdom of God should be disclosed. Now, go with me to verses 16 through 19 in that same chapter. And it reads that we would grant you according to the riches of my glory, no, to according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, 
that Christ may dwell, that Christ may dwell in your hearts, our hearts, by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love. And I stop there because I think of a plaque that uh, Pastor Martin has in his church. God's love, it talks about God's love for people. And that sticks love, with me. Love God's God. love. Love God. Love, love God. God. Thank you, Pastor. Love God. Love people. So we must be rooted and grounded in love. May be able to comprehend with all saints in the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ, which passive, or another word, which surpasses knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. In Ephesians, we have been reminded God's original kingdom intention about mankind is to bring us together in Christ as one people, to serve together in unity, to live lives of faith, to live mature lives for the fulfillment of God's kingdom program. Now we can be busy doing a lot of things but is it for God's program? Is it to satisfy a personal need in us because we need to be used or want to be used or want to be seen? What's the motive in our mind about fulfilling? What are we thinking about as we go about doing things? Are we fulfilling God's kingdom program? We've been reminded that the eyes of our heart be enlightened so that we would know the hope of our calling. What are we called to do? What are we called to be? So that we proclaim per the New um, American Standard Bible that the unfathomable riches of Christ and that we have spiritual power. Now, if you will, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let me get there. In chapter 12, it tells us this, and I'm going to start at verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are diversities of ministrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but the same God, which worketh in all God, the same God which worketh all, in all, in all. God is working in all of us. Verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to do what? To profit with all. In the New English translation, that verse is given for the benefit of all. God has given us, each of us, gifts. He has called us to do many things, some things in the kingdom. So my question is, are we being all that we can be? All that God would want us to be? so that we can benefit all. 
Now, are we going to touch everybody? Let's say all that we come across, all that we work with, all in the body of Christ. What's all to you? For the remainder of this message, <clears throat> I want to use the analogy of a tree. That's the purpose of the tree behind me. For the tree to grow, it needs some basic things. It needs soil. Now you can't see that, but this tree does have soil. Roots reach into the ground and collect nutrients. So the roots of this tree is reaching into that pot to collect nutrients. So how do we establish strong roots or a strong foundation in Christ? To be rooted and grounded in God, we should take prayers. We should pray. We should meditate on his word, attend church and Bible study regularly, read books for spiritual and personal growth, and listen to worship music. I remember the first time I heard that song called to be, I played it over and over and over again. Because that's my desire, to be all that God would have me to be. I look back, did I do everything I could have done? No, there were some hindrances. And some of those were up here that stopped me. I put up barriers on myself. Oh, I don't know if I could do that. Oh, I don't think I can do that because I'm not this, I'm not that. But if God put it in me, if the Holy Spirit, and I'm listening to it, is working, I can be all that I could be. If I listen and obey, I can be all that God would have me to be. My favorite scripture is one of them is Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. To trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will, I'm going to change you, direct my path. He will direct our path so that we can be all that he has called us to be. We saw in Ephesians um, 3, where well, I'm talking about the things that's needed, and, and I mentioned the soil. We saw that in Ephesians 3, that he would grant us according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That comes through the prayer for example the plant or the tree needs water it had water has its purpose for a tree water is needed to keep the soil from getting dry i just thought of dry bones but i won't go there <laughs> it's to keep the water the the soil from getting dry in our body water is to lubricate. It helps keep normal temperatures. It gets rid of waste. Water is a cleansing thing. In Ephesians 5, Paul speaks to husbands about washing of water by the word. Water of the word has a cleansing power. The tree also needs nutrition or nutrients. Trees need um, rooting hormones, in some cases moss, which produce food. And when I was talking about the water, this is what I water this tree with, or this is what I water my plants with. It needs water. 
Nutrition. The tree needs nutrition. Now this says plant food, but I give this tree plant food. That's the nutrition that it gets. I feed this tree, which started out when I first got it, and I didn't know it was going to grow into <laughs> a tree. Someone gave me a little piece of something, and I like plants. I have plants around the house. But when I got this, it was, what is that? Six inches, seven inches, eight inches. It wasn't much taller than this. As you can see, the water, the soil, the nutrients has grown this tree <laughs> mm -hmm. to be this tall. The tree also needs light to grow. There are many verses in the Bible about the light of the world. Um, the light of the world is a, a phrase Jesus used um, not only to describe Christ, but also to describe his disciples. And remember I said when I got the tree, which I thought was just a plant, it was only but so high. How did it get this tall? It got this tall over time. So over time, mm -hmm. we can grow to be all that we could be in Christ. It takes the roots to grow, the nutrients, the water, those things that I mentioned for us to grow. The word of God, the teachings of God, the Bible studies. Now, if you would, turn with me to John chapter 15, where, <clears throat> let me get there too in the Bible. Okay, John chapter 15, starting at verse 1. It says, I am the true vine, yes. and my father is the husbandman. Every mm -hmm. branch yes. in me yes. that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me yes. and mm. I in you mm. as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. And if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. John 15 verse 8 in the New International Version says that we are to bear much fruit showing ourselves to be his disciples. Showing is an action word. We can't do that if we hide in our house 
don't talk to anybody, even minister when we go to Walmart grocery store, wherever. We need to show ourselves to be his disciples. If our roots have grown in proper soil or in God, if washing of water by the word has taken place, if we have fed sufficiently and since time has passed, the result should be growing or maturing disciples in Christ. Being rooted and grounded in God is the key to bearing fruit. When we were in school, we learned how to add. One plus one is two. When we hear the word, when we attend Bible study, we are adding to our knowledge and to our wisdom. When we, are, when we were in school, we also learned to multiply. Using a fruit tree, and let's say this is a fruit tree, or using the fruit tree analogy, when it bears fruit, it just, just doesn't uh, bear one apple, one orange, or one lemon. It bears many fruits. So my question this morning is, have we shared with others the things that we have learned? My former pastor, John Cherry, used to say, <coughs> excuse me, don't just sit here and slurp up sermons. He said, our church at that time when I was attending was called Full Gospel, was like a filling station we were to get full and to go out and teach others. For some self-reflection questions, are we just slurping up sermons and Bible study teachings? Or are we sharing those teachings or materials shared with us? Are we stretching and seizing opportunities to grow spiritually and personally? Or are we staying in our comfort zone? The comfort zone of doing the same thing the same way. The comfort zone of doing the same thing with the same people. Are we staying in the comfort zone, which renders the same results? Questions, more questions. Are we living with limitations or barriers that can be removed? The main question is, have we accomplished what God has called us to do. Are we doing what God has called us to do? I want to close with this thought from Chuck Swindoll. He says, nobody is a whole chain. Each one is a link but take away one link and the chain is broken. Nobody is a whole orchestra. Each one is a musician, but take away one musician and the symphony is incomplete we need each other but i want to ask you to be what you are called to be let us be what we are called to be
God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, First Lady. Thank you. Called to be. Called to be. I sat there and a couple of things ran ran across my mind. The first being that in, in our teaching, one of the first books that, uh, that or one of the first courses that we teach is the course on knowing your purpose. Do we know our purpose? Do we know what part of the body God has purposed us to be? Do we know that? We have to ask God. We have to seek God. Lord, do you want me to be the arm? Do you want me to be the neck? What am I called to be? I, I can't do it without knowing that. I, I, I can want but I cannot function properly unless I know my part in the body. And then the other part that came to me with, 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 uh, with the talking or ministering, she, she talked about how, how short the, this was, and now it's over seven feet tall, by the way. You, you can't even see the top of it. It's over seven feet tall, and it being about this tall. But not only has it grown over seven feet, we have cut it several times, and those cuttings, somebody got to hear this, and those cuttings have caused new trees to grow. It's not just about us. Are we multiplying? Are we, are we taking the, the, the gifts God has given us and using them to multiply disciples? Or is it just my four and no more? That old saying, old cliche, my four and no more. Are we going out, as she said, to the to the marketplace and letting them know, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you so much, Lady Pettis, for sharing that word with us. I tell you, and, and as she was mentioning that, it came back to me again about our course, our, our course on, on uh, life overcoming the textbook. The course is abundant life. And, and what Bishop Jakes did, he took the six pillars of abundant living from the book of Ephesians, from the book of Ephesians. So i um, try to hold it better here. So uh, I encourage everyone to share with everyone to take a look, to go back and let's let's review this this teaching, this ministry this morning as a as a, as a uh, platform for takeoff into our next course. God bless you. Thank you so much. Center, now's your opportunity. I, I wouldn't let this day go by. I, I tell you, it, after a while you reach that point of growth. So you see these little seeds all on the end. Yeah, yeah. It, it takes a while, it takes a while. But, but I tell you, if you stick with God, Oh, if you stick with God and, and if you're under the right teaching, if you're under sound teaching, sound doctrine, God will bring you to a place where you'll be a multiplier. Hallelujah. God, God will bring you to a place. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Where, where, where your, your testimony will go forth your testimony of how good God has to you, but it starts with you believing, it starts there, that he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. To the backslider, we say again, come home, come home, parable son, prodigal son, come home, prodigal daughter. Okay, you know you know what the pig pit is like now. You've been out there long enough. Okay, we've, we've twerked and shaked our booty and, and we've done all this other crazies. We've done it long enough now. Okay, come on home. Come on, you know your foundation. You know your foundation. Come on, we've tried all kinds of sex, illicit, uh, uh, whatever they call these, these other forms. We, we've done all, now come on home. Come on home. Dad is calling you. There's a work in the kingdom for you. There's a work in the kingdom for you. Come home, come home. Lord God, we thank you now. We thank you for that word this morning, God, that we are called to be. We are called to be. I, I thank you, God, that 
that, that we're yet in the branch. We yes, Oh God, I thank you. I thank you. No, we may not be a six inch trunk. We may, no, 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 no. But just to still be attached to the branch, Lord, we thank you this morning. Let this word today, let it sink into our hearts and then let it multiply. Let it come up in our minds over and over again. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and I bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday and if it's the Lord's will, We'll see you again next Sunday at 10 a.m. Be blessed of the Lord.